beer temperature. Welcome to another edition of Bands, Bikes and Bows Reviews. A little bit different today, I had a request from a subscriber to do a short video on how to serve up beer. This is my interpretation on the temperatures that beer should be served at. There are a few rules to remember or to bear in mind when you're serving beer, when you're storing beer and when you're pouring beer. Most importantly is the temperature. Now here are a few points on temperature and what it will do to your beer. Warmer beer or slightly warmer beer will help the perception of flavour in the body. So when you're drinking your beer, if it is a slightly warmer temperature, your receptors in your mouth and on your palate, the signal that is sent to the brain which will calculate what these flavours are, that signal is strengthened with warmer temperatures. The colder the beer, the less carbonation that is released, thus less aroma is released. And as we all know, aroma is a huge part of taste perception. Cold beer will numb the palate, which will hamper the perception of flavour. It's a fact that different beers are served at different temperatures. And there is a, a sort of rule of thumb that I always go by, i.e. the fermentation temperatures. Now I'm not gonna cover you know, the actual temperatures that beer is fermented at. This is just purely gonna be on how beer or the temperature that beer is served. But a rule of thumb or a quick guide in my mind when I'm looking at beer and how it should be stored at what temperature if it's a bottom fermented beer, that is fermented at lower temperatures. Usually, there are a couple of exceptions, but usually that will be served at cooler temperatures. Top fermented beer, i.e. beer that is fermented at a higher temperature, is usually, there are a couple of exceptions, served at a slightly warmer temperature. Lighter coloured beers should be served at cooler temperatures. Lighter coloured beers are usually bottom fermented. Darker beers should be served at a slightly chilled or room temperature. Now there are variations in these temperatures when they say chilled and room temperature, there is quite a big difference. I'll go into that further. Here is my guide to suggested serving temperatures. Now, there are a few degrees that can vary on these suggestions, but these are the sort of ballpark figures you should be looking at when you're serving up your beer. Ice cold, ranging from naught degrees to four degrees, 32 degrees to 39 degrees Fahrenheit. Pale American lager, macro brewed lager, and low alcohol lager. Pale American Lager, it doesn't have much flavour to start off with. So your Miller Lights, your Budweiser's, your Coors, etc. Not much flavour. Best served and best drunk, ice cold, just for that quick, refreshing, nice, cold, liquid, cooling effect. Same goes for Macro Lager. You do get slightly more flavour in certain Macro Lagers. But the general rule of thumb, if you're drinking Foster's, if you're drinking Carlin, if you're drinking Heineken, Carlsberg, etc., serve that ice cold. Not only is it going to be refreshing, but it will also disguise the nasties that are in that beer. Well, I'm not responsible for the hangover the next morning. Fridge cold, as I like to call it. German light beers such as Helles's, Pilsner's, Lagers, that type of thing. 
uh, you've got your wheat beers, which will also be served at this temperature. Kirsch, now here's an exception. Kirsch is a top fermented beer. It look, for all intents and purposes, it tastes and looks like a lager. It's just top fermented. This is one of the exceptions to my rule about top fermented and bottom fermented beer, usually dictating what the temperature, serving temperature is. Kirsch looks and tastes like lager, so that should be served at fridge cold temperatures. Strong lagers as well. Anything over 6%, any lagers that are over that should be served fridge cold. Pilsners, as I mentioned, but also Czech Pilsners too. Belgian Lambics. Now, this is a bit debatable because, again, that is another top fermented beer. Certain people can drink these at warmer temperatures, but if you want a refreshing Lambic, such as a Cherry Creek, etc., that is the best temperature to drink it at, in my opinion. The same goes for Berliner Weiss. If you really like that sour flavour, then I think fridge cold is probably the best temperature to get that. Dark lagers. Now dark lagers are bottom fermented and they are for all intents and purposes a lager. They just use a little extra roasted malt in them. If you drink that too cold, that will taste very bitter. My general rule of thumb for that is just drink that at fridge temperature. Wit beer as well, like German Weiss beer, you will get possibly slightly more flavour if it's warmer, but if it won't be as refreshing because Wit beer is quite a refreshing beer. So my suggestion for that is fridge temperature. And of course there's Gers. Now, if you want to drink that at fridge temperature, again, it goes back to my rule that if it's, you know, you want to balance between refreshing, but also getting the flavours, fridge cold is the best for Gers. You can possibly drink it warmer. Some people may like it warmer, but if you want the balance of refreshing and flavour, I think fridge temperature is the ideal temperature for Gers. Chilled is slightly, slightly warmer than the fridge temperature that I've just gone through. This would be, you would take your beer out of the fridge and you would leave it, let it set it down 20 minutes or so tops. Just take that little cold edge off of it and you will get more of the flavors. Now, the beers that I suggest should be served at this temperature would be American Pale Ales and American IPAs. Then you'll get all the hop character from them beers, which of course is really what they're about is to get them flavours. Uh, amber ale as well, top fermenting, you know, we're starting to go into top fermenting territory now. Amber ale is another one. Looks like a lager, but it's got slightly more flavour and you want to get them flavours out. Dunkelweizen or dark wheat beers, of course they're using the caramel malts. You want to taste that caramel malt in there. That's the whole point, in my opinion, of drinking a dark wheat beer. If you have that too cold, you're just going to kill that caramel malt flavour. Uh, stouts as well. Now there is there is a certain science behind drinking cold stouts. When I say cold, I mean lower than chilled because it will enhance the bitterness of the roasted malt and it will make it taste quite harsh. Now some people like their really bitter stouts and if you do like that, I suggest you put it in the fridge, take it straight out and drink it. If you want to get the balance between the roasted malt and the sweeter pale malt, then I suggest you leave it for about 10 minutes and you will get more of a balance, less of a bitter edge. Same goes for porters as well. They're virtually the same beers anyway. Golden ale like amber ale is another one. Now golden ale is a British and American phenomenon, you know, and you get, you know, some of the stuff from the Anchor Steam Brewery. You don't want to have that really fridge cold temperature on that. You want to get some of them flavors through. Belgian doubles and triples. Now, I'm sort of straddling two temperatures here. With the Belgian, Belgian doubles and triples, some people may want to drink them because they really like the flavour, but they also want a bit of refreshment from them. You know, if you're having a meal and you know the food's quite warm, you want to have it a little bit colder, in my opinion. So it's perfectly acceptable to take a, I think in many ways, this is all my opinion, I think it's perfectly acceptable to take a double or a triple out of the fridge leave it for you know 20 minutes maximum in at room temperature in the bowl and then open it up and pour it into the glass and then drink straight away you'll have that fine balance of chilled and not too cold to get all the flavors alps beer that's another one you should drink at 
slightly chilled. It's again got a lot of caramel malt on that. You do not want to drink that too cold, otherwise you will stifle the flavour of that caramel malt. And again, you will lose the point of out beer. Czech Pilsners too. Some of them Czech Pilsners have got a lot of the Sartz hops character in there. Um, there's also some dark Czech Pilsners. Again, I would drink them chilled. Now, I did say in my in the previous section that you should you could drink Czech Pilsners really cold. Of course, it's perfectly acceptable to drink Czech Pilsners fridge cold. You know, on a hot day, it's really refreshing to have a, a Czech Pilsner straight from the fridge. But if you if you if you wanted to get the the true flavour of the beer. I'd say leave it for sort of 10 minutes, 15 minutes, open it up, get it in the glass, and then drink. Your cellar temperatures. Now, cellar temperatures can vary from bar to bar. Now, you can get chilled cellars. You can get cellars that are just naturally cold. Sometimes you can get cellars that are slightly warmer. So this is a bit of a gray area. But if I take your average British pub as an example, these are the sort of beers that should be sold at cellar temperature. Now you've got to remember a lot of these will be in cask or keg in these cellars. So this is why they're slightly higher and you, you want to get more of the flavours from these top fermenting beers. Beers such as bitter and brown ale, quite similar style bitters, but there's lots of malt character going on there with you know caramel and toffee malt in both of them. You want to really get that out so you don't want that too cold. So cellar temperature is the, the optimum temperature for that, I think. Anything colder, you're gonna miss out on some of the flavors. English IPA as well. Now, I put the American IPA in a slightly a colder category. British IPA, I think, or English IPA, should be served slightly warmer just to get the malt character, but also to get them lovely British earthy hops and cellar temperature for me is the optimum temperature. Same goes for English pale ale. Now you could argue that the two are quite similar styles and they are basically, so that same rule applies for English pale ale. ESB or extra special beer. Now ESB is quite strong, usually in ABV, but it's still got a lot of flavor. Now if you, if you dumb that down or you make that colder, you may kill some of the ones that have got the spirit alcohol, yeah, you may get rid of that, but you're also gonna kill some of the flavor. Again, as I try and emphasize on this, they have got a lot, these British beers have got lots of malt character in there. And if you serve them cold, you're dulling that down, in my opinion. Old ales as well, that's the same. Now, again, people may not like the, the higher spirit alcohol or the ethanol flavors that you do get from certain old ales. You can argue that if you want to keep that in a fridge longer, yeah, that's fine. But there's always a compromise when you do that. You may be killing the ethanol or the spirit alcohol flavour, but you're also killing some of the, the malt and the hop character that you get in these old ales. Belgian sour ales. Now, I've talked about Gers before. I'm not talking Gers when I say Belgian sour ales. I'm usually talking about, you know, Flanders red ale, that type of thing, the Grand Cru, that type of stuff. Yeah, I, I really do think you should serve that slightly warmer to get that lovely sour flavour from Flemish Red Ale because there is malt character in there as well. And if you serve that colder, I think you're going to stifle that again. So my suggestion would be to just serve that slightly warmer. Bier de Garde, not my favourite style of beer, but if you do like that, then of course I would say serve that slightly warmer. It's, it's got quite a lot going on in there, in Bière de Garde, and I think serving it colder, you're gonna kill them flavors. If I had to drink that, if I had no choice, this is a personal thing, I would drink that as cold as possible because I am not really a fan. Now, I've only tasted a few Bière de Garde and every, every single one I didn't like. I just thought there was too much going on there and it, it wasn't balanced and it didn't taste nice. So if that was me, I'd be serving it a lot colder, but if you do like Bière de Garde, I think you should be serving that at cellar temperature. Belgian Abbey doubles and Belgian Abbey ale. Now I did mention previously on the, the last category that you could drink Belgian doubles and triples, just take them out of the fridge, let them warm up. Belgian Abbey ale has got slightly more going on in there. And of course, usually they're bottle, from, bottle conditioned as well. And some of these 
uh, yeast strains that they use may not ferment at lower temperatures so it's you know it's, it's a compromise really I would personally would just leave them at room temperature you will get more of the flavor and of course you'll get more of the the yeast character that is in these beers that have that second fermentation Weizenbock I again is another one now Weizenbock is a strong wheat beer I think that should be served at room temperature now I, I have said that the wheat beers you know that uh, the German crystal vice vice and etc should be served at fridge temperature because that is effectively a summer drink even though you know people drink it all year round but I think that that Weizenbock has got a lot more flavour going on in there so I think cellar temperature for that you would get the optimum flavour perception when it's served at that temperature. And room temperature which is basically not in a fridge at all. These are usually the stronger beers. Now again there's an argument for this ethanol spirit alcohol that runs through a lot of these strong beers. When I say strong beers, I'm talking about Belgian quadruples, Imperial Stouts and Icebox, you know, that type of beer. When you're, you know, you're talking sort of nine, between eight and a half, nine percent, and anything upwards, I think that should be served at room temperature. Now, again, as I said before, there can be an argument that if you don't like that flavor, that ethanol flavor, and you wanna sort of numb that then yeah, put it in the fridge. But again, as I say, it is a compromise. You are gonna lose some of the flavor that comes with them beers. And believe me, there is a lot of flavor that goes on with Belgian quadruples and Eisenbox and Imperial Stouts as well. So, you know, that's something to bear in mind. So that's my take on the suggested serving temperatures for beer. Now, of course, there is a few, as I said before, there is a few degrees either way on them, but that is the sort of general figure you should be looking at. Now, I don't expect you to put a, you know, a thermometer in your beer and, you know, oh, it's right for drinking now. Don't do that. You, don't, you really don't need to. You can sort of tell when a beer is cold or ice cold, when it's fridge cold, when it's chilled, etc. You know, it's generally easy to perceive that. So here's the summary. Increasing the temperature of a beer will increase the flavour perception that your body will have. It will strengthen the signal that, from your receptors that go to the brain that will register what these flavours are. There are exceptions to this, of course, you know, as I mentioned before, with the ice cold stout or the very, very cold stout that will enhance the bitterness of it. It will take the balance away and it will genuinely make it quite intense and bitter and you won't be getting the true taste of the beer. The same could be said for certain other beers like Old Ale, etc., because there is a balance. And when you serve it at different temperatures, the balance of them ingredients, it, will, it can go out of kilter and you get a different taste. The final word to say on this is at the end of the day, it is up to you how you drink your beer. This is just a guide it is not a hard and fast rule if you like ice cold stout then you, and that does things for you then carry on drinking ice cold stout if you like warm bud ice carry on drinking it it's all about taste but if you really do want to taste how the beer should be tasted try and serve it at the correct temperature it will just make it a nicer drinking experience and remember, beer is working class champagne.